Okay, let's talk about fuses and fuse wire. Uh, this is part one of a two-part video series on testing the particular wire that you have to see if it's suitable for using as cell level fuses, Tesla style fuses. Uh, so there's two things you want to test. You, one, you want to test that it will actually break when um, subjected to a high enough current. And two, you need to test that it won't burn out when you're just using it normally. So this first video is going to be how you could test whatever wire you're planning to use to see if it will burn at the appropriate current. Um, so to work out what the, the threshold is. Um, you can go and buy fuse wire of various types that might have, say for example, a 5 amp fuse rating, but it's nice to test whether it really does burn at that level. Um, and rather than actually shell out a lot of money for small bits of real fuse wire, the other thing you can do is you can use this um, um, enamel wire that's really easy to buy from an electronics um, store, eBay, AliExpress, whatever. And this is, um, I think it says 0.25 millimeter diameter. Um, so pretty thin. And that is wire that I've used quite a lot on my packs. Then the other thing, you can, you can actually buy the same thing sold as um, copper wire for jewellery. And this is 0.2 millimetres. Um, so if you don't have an electronics store nearby, you might perhaps have a some kind of dressmaking or artsy crafty place that would sell copper wire, thin copper wire. So that's another option. That's Basically enameled wire. Uh, actually, I think it's, I think it's enameled. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it is just copper wire. Um, let's test that. Then the other thing you can do is you can pull apart some random wire that you have lying around and see if it's got some very thin strands in it and maybe you can use that. So that's what me and my friend John did recently as we stripped the innards out of some wire like that and we got this nice thin, super thin stuff um, probably pretty hard to see that but um, he, John, my friend, has some very nice calipers that measured that at 0.2 millimeters diameter so by looking up online there's um, charts that tell you what current a 0.2 millimetre wire should be able to carry, what, kind, what um, kind of fuse wire, fuse current it should be able to burn out at. And 0.2 is about 5 amps, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, so what I have here is a little setup which is incredibly simple. It's one 18650 wired through a multimeter set to amps make sure it's on DC amps not AC amps and then I've got some heavier wire running from the multimeter to a to an alligator clip then at the other end of the battery I've got it hooked up to this arm which is just holding the piece of wire and it's going off to another thing that's just holding it in media and you can use this circuit and if you start way out at about 30 centimeters which is about a foot um, you can get a sense of how well this wire performs in terms of the current that it will that it will um, carry and if you start nice and long, 
the, the wire has enough surface area that it will dissipate the heat that comes off from all that current f flowing through it um, without burning. And then you can run this along closer and closer to get a sense of how long a piece of wire um, it can be before it burns. Now, on a, an 18650, your piece of wire is going to be somewhere in the region of 1 to 2, two centimetres, maybe an inch max, half an inch to an inch. Um, so if it burns out at, say, uh, 10 centimetres, if it burns out there, then you know it's definitely going to burn out there, and that'll be fine. So that'll tell you that this will be great as a, as a fuse, for burning out if there's too much current and then the next thing to, to work out is whether it's actually going to carry the current that you would normally use um, in normal operation and I'll cover that part in, um, in the second video but this one is all about seeing how much current so if we connect that up up to there and this is warming up and we've got whee! So this is the enamel wire, and you can see the enamel starting to burn off. I've already actually um, scraped most of the enamel off so that this will actually make an electrical connection using a um, bit of sandpaper. So I've scuffed it up, and, but there'll still be little bits of enamel on there. When you're attaching this to the 18650 in your battery pack, your soldering iron burns off the enamel. Or you can pre-scrape it with a um, some sandpaper. So, 30, 30 centimetres, we get little puffs of burning enamel. It's carrying 6 amps, and it's a bit warm. It's a bit warm, I probably shouldn't touch that, because I suspect I'll create a nice little burn mark on me. Let's see just how far, how close I can go before it actually breaks. So, where are we? 20, 15, 10, 5, and then, oh, I'm starting to burn there. And that is about where I would expect it to, so I've got 7 amps and what might be happening is that um, I might not be getting a decent connection oh yeah so <laughs> just then I was starting to get a good connection and I saw 11 amps flowing um, but it, interestingly it hasn't blown yet so that might I wonder if that's because this connection here isn't very good that's possible let's put it on there oh yeah so as long as, as, as soon as I got a good connection um, at this distance, it burns quite happily uh, at that current rating. So that, that tells me that um, in the scenario where this fuse wire might be used in a real pack, the the thing that it, the reason it's there is if you have one cell in a parallel group of 10 or 20 or 30 or 100. Uh, if one cell starts to short circuit, um, that allows lots of current from the other cells in the group, in the parallel group, to feed um, current through the cell and through that, that fuse. And when the current gets high enough, around 10 amps, I think it was 10 amps, um, then it blows and disconnects the, the bad cell and then theoretically the rest of the pack is saved and is fine. Um, so that enamel wire look, works fine. Um, I'll, while I'm here, I'll just try this jewellery copper wire and see if it... I don't know if it's enamel coated or not. Let's find out how this works. So I just connect that up like that. That's good. Right. Right. Let us start off at around 30. 
And what am I getting? I'm getting, I'm getting nothing at all. Ah, that's interesting. So maybe this is actually enamel coated. That's interesting. All right. I'll um, scrape off some of the... I think it's enamel coated. Which is why I wasn't get, getting any reading whatsoever. Yeah, and it's incredibly thin. Alright. Wow, it's very thin. Let me work on this and I'll get back to you. Okay, let's try this then. So I'll start with 30. I don't think I've managed to strip the enamel there. So nothing going on, no current. Or am I doing something else wrong? No. Yeah, here we go. Oh, oh, we got something there. There we go. Whew. Yes, it's definitely enamel coated. Hmm. Whew. Six amps, five amps. There we go. Oh, that's blowing quite nicely. Six amps. So, yeah. So, it burns up. Quite happily. So that's 0.2 millimeters diameter. So that's quite nice stuff actually. Um, and it's slightly smaller diameter than the stuff I've been using previously. So that might be a better, better um, wire to use. The other wire that I've been using is this stuff that I had previously showed you, so that stuff there, the innards from a random piece of roll of wire that I found in my junk bin. So let's try this. That goes there, that goes there, probably could use a bit of Bit of tension on that. There we go. Right. Okay, let's see what current we get. Okay, so we've got three amps, three and a half amps going through it right now. Let's get closer. Let's go all the way to 20. And a bit of heat coming off that, I can feel. Yeah. Let's go to 15. Yep, there's a bit of a dull glow going on there. You probably can't see it. Go down to 10. Oh, a nice little glow there. Five, and it blows. So this wire is actually quite nice as well. Um, I suspect when John measured that at 0.2 millimetres, it was indeed 0.2 millimetres. So it's about the same as this jewellery wire. That's nice to know. Um, and the benefit of this over the jewellery wire is it doesn't have the enamel coating. So that's nice. Um, then just for completeness sake, I'll, just for completeness sake, I'll show you what happens with this stuff here. And so this is the innards from some mains electrical wiring and this is the earth wire and it's obviously thicker than 0.2 um, maybe it's 0.4 maybe 0.4 ish let's try that so this is copper wire not enamel coated which is nice get this hooked up 
Okay, there we go. So this is the wire that I've been using on the back of my um, packs recently. And the theory is that this is much twice as thick as that, so it'll burn out um, at a much higher current. So um, hopefully it'll never burn out because the, the fuse side, the real fuse side, will burn first. All right then, so let's start at, at 25, and it's 8, 8 amps, let's go down to 20, 9 amps, 15, that beeping is my multimeter saying, oh I don't like this, it's higher than my rating, it's rated at 10 amps, let's go to 10, 10 centimeters, it's glowing quite nicely, and we're getting 9 amps going through it. Let's go to 5. It's glowing, it's not burning, and it's about 10 amps. So, how close can I go? Uh, so, at, so at, at some some point, the distance, when the distance is really short, the... Um, the fuse rating goes up because the heat from the um, current is being dissipated by the end heat sinks. That's a heat sink and that's a heat sink. So you can see that's not glowing. Now it's starting to glow at about four centimeters, just over an inch. Yeah, whereas here it doesn't. Interesting, eh? There's a little bit of glow. Hmm. But it's not, it's not um, breaking. It's not acting as a fuse. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So that is one way to test whatever way you happen to stumble across to see whether or not it's going to burn at a decent current. Um, and you can do that with a single 18650. I would recommend using a low capacity one because um, it's a pretty brutal thing to do to a battery to have a short circuiting like that. Um, this is warm. Let's see what voltage it's. Let's see what voltage it's at. Um, after all that torture, I think it started out at just over four volts, and now it's three point eight six. Had a bit of a hard time in the last 10 minutes. That'll cool down. Um, I don't intend to actually use that in a pack um, now that I've tortured it. Um, so, there, yeah, hopefully that is useful to some people. Uh, before I go, the next video is going to be on testing a single cell. I'll probably use the same one to see if the fuse wire that you happen to choose will work for the load that you're planning to use. So typically in a power wall scenario you've got so many cells in parallel that you're not going to be drawing more than say one amp per cell maximum uh, and most likely it's, you're going to be looking at half an amp or a quarter of an amp per cell. Um, so it's worth just verifying that the tiny little wire that you've got is going to cope with that modest load. So that's what the next video will be about. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.